Hello, today is September the 8th, 2019, and this is Wes Fryer with a summary of our Sunday School lesson today at First Presbyterian Church in Edmond, Oklahoma. We were responding to a video that was shared back in 2015 by Stephen Fry, which is very passionately making a case against not only the existence of God, but the goodness of God. So, our course, Curiosity and Questions, Jesus and Science, is utilizing a variety of different resources, and here in a couple weeks, we're going to start using Francis Collins' book, The Language of God. And Francis Collins is the scientist who led the Human Genome Project, which successfully mapped the human genome, and he was actually raised an atheist, but then came to faith uh, as an adult and wrote a book about his experiences. And that's one of the things that we are hoping to be able to talk about and get greater insight into is how we and how others are understanding truth and understanding our faith um, just as the, uh, the, the revelation that the earth was not the center of our universe, but that the Earth actually rotated around the sun. That was a dramatic challenge to the Catholic Church back in the days of Galileo, uh, the heliocentric model of uh, Copernicus. You know, we understand that there are a lot of things that we have discovered and are continuing to discover about our scientific world, um, but one of the underlying theses, I think, of our class is that these kinds of discoveries can deepen our respect for and our um, faith in God as a creator and as someone who has come down to earth in the form of Jesus Christ and has a relationship with each one of us. So our format for this week changed just a little bit. We moved our joys and concerns to the end of our class and we shortened our fellowship time. And this is some feedback that we received from some members of our class that are in the choir. And this just gives them a little bit more time to be able to get in on the lesson since they have to leave a little bit early. Uh, but we still are gonna follow the same format uh, with an opening prayer and a Bible focused verse. And then our lesson with some time for table talk and uh, than joys and concerns at the end. So our big questions this lesson um, came from this video, and they are they are pretty big ones. We are considering why there is evil in the world, how do we know that God is good, and then some of the differences in knowing between faith and science. And so James 1.17 was the focus verse that we chose to have. So our verse, James 1, 17, reads, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. And we drew out several things from this, including the fact that God is the same. He has been, he is, and always will be. The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament, is the God of our lives this day. He is the God of the cosmos, the creator, and that good things come from God. He is a good father. And um, James was the half-brother of Jesus. And um, we mentioned, you know, we asked some of the things that people thought about or knew, knew about as far as the book of James. And James is one of the, the uh, New Testament writers who actually talks quite a bit about works. And I remembered that. I think it was Martin Luther who wanted to actually strike the book of James at one point from the canon because... You know, he so ardently talks about works, but we certainly understand that salvation comes through faith and it comes through grace. Uh, it doesn't come through from works. And um, in this verse, James is very clearly helping us understand the nature of God and that the nature of God as our creator and our father is good. So before we jumped into our lesson, I mentioned that we were going to have a guest speaker next week, Kurt Gruel who has been an orthopedic surgeon. He's also gone to seminary. Uh, he's now an artist and also now is a leader in the Spiritual Directions program that is an ecumenical ministry here in Oklahoma City. We'll be talking a little bit about his journey of faith and his journey as a scientist and as a, a practicing medical doctor. Um, he actually taught at Children's Hospital and had a, a really extensive and intense career, and so I'm looking forward to that. But on the 22nd of September, we're going to actually start 
by highlighting and going through the first chapter of Francis Collins' book, The Language of God. And so in our Google Classroom, uh, which I'll talk about next, we've got some links to that book. If anybody wants to, go ahead and pick, a, pick up a copy either in print or a digital copy. So I have obscured the code here because this is a code to join our Google Classroom that is just for members, but um, we've come to class. We do have a printed copy of this on the wall, and we want to encourage you, although it's not required, to download a copy of the app on your iPhone or Android phone, Google Classroom. And you can join our class where we are sharing resources like these slides and the videos and other kinds of links and resources that we are talking about in class each week. So the backstory to today's lesson is that last weekend when our family was up in Manhattan, Kansas, we went to the service at First United Methodist Church where my parents attend, and the pastor there actually shared this video by, by Stephen Fry, but I felt like the response was really not quite as strong and certainly didn't provide a, what I thought would be sufficient opportunity um, to counterbalance just a very strong message. It's almost like a slap in the face to folks who are who are Christian and who are, who are following followers of Jesus. Um, and so that's how I learned about this particular video. I also mentioned that in conversations with our family, and this is a picture we took last weekend on Sunday after we had had some brunch, um, there are folks in our families most likely that either are struggling or have struggled with these kinds of questions, we may be struggling with these. These are, you know, tough questions. They're not things that we can, I think, definitively answer. I mean, especially the, the question of evil and the existence of evil. Our, pa our pastor, Eric Lawrence mentioned that in the sermon today. It's one of the, the biggest enigmas and, and challenges that we have as believers. But you know, we wrestle with this, and we even wrestle with God. That's what our sermon was about a little bit, the story of Jacob as we start a new sermon series about Joseph. And so anyway, this is just, th these are really relevant questions and good things for us to wrestle with uh, because, you know, there are, there are a lot of people out there, including ourselves, um, who, you know, wonder about these things. And as we go through different seasons of life, um, the, these are questions and challenges that can, you know, it sometimes be, be really difficult to get through and to, to figure out. And so we want to grapple with them. So Stephen Fry, for those that don't know, is a English actor, comedian, and writer. He was a longtime host from 2003 to 2016 of the BBC show uh, QI, um, which I guess was one of his one of his claims to fame. But he is uh, a well known personality in in England. And so in 2015, on uh, Ireland's National Public Service Media Channel, um, he gave an interview and shared the quotation, which I'm not going to play this quotate, this, this video clip. It's about, I think, two and a half minutes long, but uh, I will have a link to that if you're viewing this on YouTube uh, below this video, and um, we're also, of course, having a link to that in our Google Classroom. This was a um, interview that, as of you know, yesterday, September the 6th, 2019, had had over eight and a half, almost eight and a half million views on YouTube. So a lot of people have seen this, and it caused quite a bit of controversy. One of the things it caused was for folks to file suit against him uh, to be, you know, either, I guess, fined or, you know, put in jail for violating the blasphemy law of Ireland. And that led to a referendum in 2018 where that portion of the law was was actually removed in Ireland, and the Catholic Church, along with I think 13 other churches, came together to say that this was antiquated. But it definitely caused a lot of people to be thinking about these questions that he's raised, um, and it, this was a big deal in, in mainstream media, and had, and had been a big deal for quite a while, um, because it wasn't just what happened in 2015, it was also you know this lawsuit and this referendum, which eventually came to pass, and, and they did vote to get rid of that blasphemy law. So the question I challenged everyone to consider in watching this video, um, and then giving everyone a couple minutes to talk about it, is how do you respond to Stephen Fry's arguments against a belief in God as good, omniscient, and omnipotent? So again, I'm not going to play that video, but I would encourage you to, if you haven't already, go ahead and link to that, 
and take a look at that. In fact, you may want to do that and then come back here to this video and continue uh, with this analysis. So we took two minutes in class to respond, to, to have some table talk, and ask people to consider the ways that they would uh, respond to these arguments. And before kind of sharing some of those, I pointed out there's a lot of folks who have written responses, recorded you know, video responses and things. This is one from Ian Paul, who is an English theologian, and he wrote a post about this incident. One of the things he pointed out was that um, apparently the statement that Fry makes about this burrowing worm, you know, in the eyes of children, um, he says, according to the new scientist, that that actual worm doesn't exist, and that probably came from a video from David Attenborough, and he's really famous for narrating Planet Earth and a number of other amazing series about our planet, um, and that was a response that he gave to why why doesn't he give all the credit for the the beauty that he sees he he talked about you know the terrible things that that he sees like parasites and so even if this particular parasite that they are referencing um does not exist or that's contested it doesn't take us very long to find you know the existence of terrible and evil things in the world i mean why did adolf hitler exist why were there death camps you know in in world war 2 um, you know, why do sometimes, you know, young children shortly after they're born, um, you know, why do they die? Or why, why do some, why are some children born with gross birth defects? Why are some people born blind? I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that we can put on this list. Uh, but anyway, if you Google for, you know, Stephen Fry, is there a God? You know, there's, there's quite a bit of, um, of, of discussion around this that you'll find online. So these were the three main discussion questions that we kind of brainstormed and then wrote some things up on the board um, about why why is evil in the world, how do we know God is good, and then some differences in knowing between faith and science. And this isn't a complete summary, but in terms of the reason for evil, one theolo theological answer for that is because of the fall that we understand from Genesis that Adam and Eve in the garden had an opportunity to make a choice and, you know, they chose to try to be like God and to go against God's will. And as a result, you know, evil entered into the world. And so uh, we are fallen people. We have uh, a sinful nature. Um, we're able to make choices. And so there's some of that that we can understand. But, you know, ultimately, we talked about how we also just have to have humility. Um, having read the the book of Job, you know, I emerged from reading that with uh, this idea that, you know, some things we're not going to be able to fully comprehend. We don't completely know and understand all things. In fact, somebody in our class pointed out that in the video, Fry seemed to sort of elevate himself to the position of God and, you know, assuming that he could understand and see all things and, you know, know why, you know, there would be parasites or not be parasites or, or whatever. So anyway, that first question, it is difficult. It is challenging. And, um, there will be some things, I think, that we can understand because of human choices uh, occur, but other things we may not be able to understand. And we just may, we just may choose faith instead of choosing hopelessness um, and, then the, and the alternatives that there are to faith. Um, so how do we know God is good? Well, the number one thing is, is Jesus Christ and the person of Jesus Christ. And, of course, that wasn't mentioned at all by Fry. And so we understand that Jesus um, is God and and he you know god came down to earth as jesus to show us him, himself his nature um through miracles that um we read about or that we've also experienced and heard about um we understand why god is good we talked about how god though is not a vending machine right and we don't always understand and maybe we've had that experience of praying for a healing miracle and that prayer is not answered in the in the way that we are wanting it to be answered and so this is also a mystery, um, that those things don't always get answered in the ways that, that we want, in the time that we want. 
Um, we understand from the Bible, certainly from Scripture, uh, the goodness of God. Uh, we also understand through God's Holy Spirit. We understand that God continues to teach us through the Holy Spirit, and that is through Scripture, it is through prayer, but it's also through relationship. It's not only relationship with Jesus Christ, but it's also through the relationships we share with each other. We also talked a little bit about differences in knowing the scientific method and the re uh, reproducibility, um, and I guess I didn't actually write this on the slide, but you know, the idea that, scient that, that science really learns things uh, through through disproving, you know, so uh, you're going to have theories that are going to be supported, uh, but what you really have more certainty about is when you reject a hypothesis and say that this is not true. Uh, but it's it's certainly all about observable facts and being able to replicate things. Contrary, you know, contrast that in faith, where you know through our experiences, but also through the Holy Spirit, through biblical revelation, um, and then through the authority that we we give to. Uh, scripture and God's Word. We come to know about God's nature and we come to deepen our faith. And so there was two di very different ways of knowing. So the last video, and I would really encourage you to take a look at this, is a short, about, again, two-minute video, but this is from Sean McDowell, and he is talking about three reasons how we know that God is good. And I'll also link that, you know, here, if you're watching this on, on YouTube, in the in the notes, and um, you could also Google it, but he's got a whole series of videos, and I think we'll probably draw on some more of these as we are continuing our class. I also want to say that I think it's so important to recognize how powerful media is, and one of the things I found frustrating about this sermon last Sunday that had shared the Stephen Fry video was there, there wasn't anything else shared to contrast that, and so I think probably a lot of people, you know, left that service in that sanctuary with really Fry's face and voice, you know, in, in their mind, and that is not, you know, that's not the voice and the perspective that we want to, to have in the forefront of our minds. In fact, we want to have Jesus Christ in the forefront of our minds, and so this video by McDowell is a good one to um, consider some, some different reasons, some of which we highlighted of how we know that God is good. So we went ahead and shared joys and concerns and uh, ended our lesson in prayer. And that was it. So thank you for listening to this summary. And you may be finding this on Facebook. I have created a public Facebook group that I am using to share uh, resources and materials about our Sunday School lessons. And I would welcome, well, and invite you to uh, join that and uh, follow that if you are interested in learning more about our continued studies. May God bless you this week, um, and I pray that as you consider all of the different uh, ways of knowing and uh, all the, the beliefs and uh, theories that you have and that are out there, I pray that you will invite God to reveal himself to you, because that is one of the things we know as Christians. When we seek God, uh, if you'll seek God through his word, through the Bible, um, and you'll seek him in prayer, and then you'll seek him through the fellowship of believers, God answers prayers, and he will reveal himself to you and bring you to a greater understanding of him, his nature, and this amazing world um, which is sometimes filled with suffering, and it is sometimes filled with tragedy, but it's also uh, filled with wonder, it's filled with glory, um, and it's filled with, with other people who uh, we have an opportunity to minister to and to live life with. And that's what we call, we're called to do, is to live life together.